Good morning. Welcome to this second Sunday after Christmas. A special welcome to any guests or visitors that we have, and also welcome to everybody who's going to be viewing this online. Thank you for joining us. I have some good news for you all. It is January 3rd, the year of our Lord, 2021. <laughs> Woo! Yes, we made it to another year. 2020 is behind us, and this year's going to be so much better, right? Right? Can we be confident in that? This year's going to be better? No. No, we can't. We don't know. Could be better. Could be worse. But that doesn't matter because God provides for his people. And uh, our hope is in him. That's what uh, God's wisdom teaches us. And we're going to be talking about wisdom today and uh, looking at that story of the boy Jesus in the temple and uh, growing in wisdom and favor with God and man. Before we get going, I have a few announcements. Um, For one, we have Bible studies plentiful here at Ascension right now, both in person and online. We have an adult Bible study uh, that you can join on on Zoom on Sunday mornings. We have a Monday night ladies' Bible study, Thursday night ladies' Bible study. Uh, uh, We have a men's ministry, men's Bible study on Thursday nights at 7 and on Friday mornings at 6 a.m., both in person and online. So you can come in person at our Maple Campus in the new expansion there or join us online. And also, um, I'll be teaching a new member class starting on Saturday, January 9th. So if you know somebody who's interested in that, or if you are, please uh, let me know. Other than that, uh, that's all I have for announcements. So why don't we stand and begin our worship with song? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. 
But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God or Father. You may kneel or sit. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We stand to sing God's praise. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come and help us by your might, that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
The Old Testament reading is from the book of 1 Kings, chapter 3. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne this day. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of David my father, although I am but a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too many to be numbered or counted for multitude. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. And God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right. Behold, I now do according to your word. Behold, I give you a wise and discerning mind, so that none like you has been before you, and none like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that no king shall compare with you, all your days. And if you will walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. Then he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord and offered up burnt offerings and peace offerings and made a feast for all his servants. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined, predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us, and in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him, who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who are the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel as we sing the verse.
the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. The child Jesus grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover, and when he was twelve years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it, but supposing him to be in the group, they went a day's journey. But then they began to search for him among their relatives and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem searching for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our worship continues by singing the hymn of the day. Pray, O wisdom, proceeding from the mouth of the Most High, permeating and pervading all of creation, mightily ordering all things, come and teach us your wisdom and prudence. Amen. You may be seated. So the coronavirus has been getting a lot of press lately, but today I want to talk about another illness that afflicts every one of us at some point. Talking about foot and mouth disease. Yeah, I'm not talking about hand, foot, and mouth disease. You might be familiar with that. But no, foot and mouth disease. You all know what I'm talking about. You know, when you say something foolish or embarrassing, 
maybe something that wasn't very wise or prudent to say. Uh, for example, maybe you got invited to an office party and you're meeting some new people and you meet a man and, and you say, and you ask, is this, your, is this your daughter? And he says, no, that's my wife. And you're like, ooh, I'm so sorry. It's just she looks so much younger and healthier than you do. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, sorry. No, that's not. Yeah, it happens to the best of us when we put our foot in our mouth. I remember I had a really bad bout of this illness in my early 20s. I thought I was really smart. You know, I graduated college, and I got around and saw the world. I, you know, spent a summer in Guatemala and saw how, like, the, the 90% of the world lives, and I came back to the States, and, man, I started picking apart our world and our culture and all the things that we value and started deconstructing everything from, like, sports and why we spend so much time and money and energy and effort on sports from micro soccer to professional sports. Like, why do we do this? What's the point of all this? I had other questions about government, about big business, about capitalism, about the way we run things. And I started poking holes in all sorts of stuff. And I would tell anybody who would listen to me about it, just what's wrong with everything? And then my dad, he knew what was going on. And uh, he sat me down. He said, son, we need to talk. I'm like, okay, what's this about? And he said, son, it takes a lot of time a lot of effort and energy to build things. And it only takes a moment to tear them all down. So you be careful tearing down what people value and what people have built. Those are wise words for me as a young man, I think. Some wise words to live by. My dad's trying to help me uh, keep from putting my foot in my mouth. But that happens. We, we become intoxicated with our own wisdom, our own intellect, our own knowledge and the things that we know. And we fail to live according to God's wisdom and to honor him with our speech. We also um, fall prey to foolishness when we follow the passions of our hearts, uh, the sinful hearts, the lusts of our flesh. We fail to honor God that way and live according to his wisdom. But today, we're going to be looking at God's wisdom, and especially that wisdom that's found in Christ. Uh, Jesus is the perfect embodiment of God's wisdom, and he also had a pure heart. Solomon, uh, from our Old Testament reading for today, definitely knew about foot and mouth disease, and he had a lot of wisdom on how to avoid um, this illness. And uh, he got, had the opportunity to watch his father, King David, live in uprightness with the Lord and, and walk in faithfulness humbly with, with God. And uh, David, as we know, uh, God was looking for a man after his own heart to be king over his people Israel, and David was that man, a man after God's own heart. And that definitely didn't mean that David was perfect, though, right? David had his foibles. He messed up, not the least of which was coveting, adultery, and murder. And also, as the stories tell us, uh, he had some failures as a father. Uh, he wasn't the best parent either. But that didn't negate the fact that he walked humbly with God. And I believe what, what this means is that uh, whenever he was confronted with his sin, when he messed up, he repented and sought the Lord and sought the Lord's wisdom. So Solomon grew up knowing his father and hearing the stories. And so when, when God comes to visit him in a dream, in a vision, and says, Solomon, I give to you whatever you ask. Well, Solomon, he doesn't ask for long life or riches or the life of his enemy. But what does he ask for? Help me out. What, is, what does Solomon ask for? No. No, he doesn't. He doesn't ask for wisdom. Check the text. He actually asked for, the ESV says, an understanding mind or a discerning mind. The NIV translates it as a discerning heart. But the Hebrew is leib shemeh, and literally translated, it is a listening heart or a hearing heart. So this word shemeh comes, uh, is the noun form of the word shema, which is, a, is the verb form. And that's the word we get in the great um, creed there in Deuteronomy chapter 6. Hear, or Shema, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. So this is what Solomon asked for, is a listening heart, a discerning heart. Because that's what David had and what he wanted to rule the people. See, Solomon humbled himself. He understood 
that he was young and inexperienced. He admitted his ignorance, and he says, Lord, help me. Give me a listening heart so that I can discern between right and wrong and govern this, your great people. He asked for a listening heart. And that is godly wisdom, right? That's where wisdom comes from. And thankfully, uh, Solomon's wisdom um, has been passed down to us. People came from all over the ancient world to hear Solomon's wisdom, and we have some pieces of that in the Scriptures. In the book of Proverbs specifically, there's a lot of wisdom in there uh, that Solomon specifically was giving to his son, but for for all to read uh, thereafter. And in that uh, book, Proverbs chapter 8, he talks about wisdom and personifies wisdom as a woman, and he says that wisdom cries aloud in the streets. And essentially nobody hears her. (laughs) Wisdom's there for people to grasp if they have the listening ears, if they have the hearts to discern, but um, they don't listen. It kind of reminds me of Jesus after he tells the parable of the sower. And he quotes Isaiah, For this people's heart has grown dull, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and turn, and I would heal them. See, earthly wisdom only gets you so far. It, you know, wisdom is that taking your knowledge and your experience and your intellect and, and applying those things in time and space. That's what wisdom is, and it can be good. But true wisdom, Solomon says, starts with the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, he says in Proverbs 9.10. Then he goes on, uh, he expounds on this in chapter 3. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. See, earthly wisdom and earthly knowledge, they can be good things. And I encourage people to pursue these things. Uh, They can help you um, navigate the world. can make you healthy and wealthy. Uh, Earthly wisdom can. However, Earthly wisdom and human reason must always be subservient to the revealed wisdom of God found in the Scriptures, and specifically in the revelation of Jesus. Because earthly wisdom, just on its own, can lead you to some dark places. Uh, It can lead you, actually, to the darkest of places of, of mass murder and genocide, following merely human reason, as we can see outlined through history, especially the last century. No, but godly wisdom... The wisdom that comes from God leads to life. Godly wisdom leads us to Jesus. And even from a young age, Jesus showed this wisdom that comes from above, this godly wisdom and a pure heart. Uh, So this gospel text that we have from Luke chapter 2 is the only picture we have into Jesus' childhood. I would love to see some more, right? Wouldn't it be great to hear some more stories of Jesus' childhood? Especially as teenage years. Man, you think you had it hard fitting in in high school? Imagine being the son of God. Like, that would be hard. That would be awkward. Or, or imagine being his parents at that point in time, too. You know, you've probably seen parents uh, with bumper stickers, proud parents of an honor student, right? What about Mary and Joseph's bumper sticker? You know, proud parents of the Messiah. King of kings, Lord of lords. Top that, neighbors. Yeah, But alas, all we have is this one story of Jesus at the temple. And as the story goes, Jesus and his family and relatives and some acquaintances head down to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover festival. And they're there and celebrate, and then they head back, all except for Jesus. And they, they go a whole day um, and realize, oh, Jesus isn't here. Where is he? They're searching. They can't find him. So Mary and Joseph head back to Jerusalem to look for their boy. And Jesus thought it obvious where he ought to be, where he should be, even at 12 years old. But it wasn't so obvious to Mary and Joseph. It took them three days to find him. They looked in Jerusalem for three days. Can you imagine how panicking you would be as a parent? And so they are searching Jerusalem, and where do they find him? Well, they find him at the temple. And what's going on? Is he getting into trouble? What is he doing? Well, he's listening to the wise and learned teachers the teachers of the law, the Torah. He's learning from them. He's asking them really good questions. And everybody is astounded by his answers and his understanding. So Jesus, even from a young age, um, exhibited this this, uh, godly wisdom 
and seeking wisdom from others. And he grew in this wisdom, which is another mystery of uh, the God become man, uh, Jesus. And Mary comes in there and she scolds her boy. Jesus, we've been worried sick about you. Your father and I have been worried sick about you. We've been searching for you. And Jesus responds, and I think this is profound. Why were you searching for me? Did you not know I must be in my father's house? Didn't you know that I must be in my father's house? See, Jesus, he had the listening heart. He was in his father's house. He was seeking the will of the father, learning about the father's word, the scriptures, the sacred sacred scriptures. His heart was always inclined that way, to, to look to the father for his instruction and his direction and how to act wisely in the world. You see, Jesus breathed in the Father's presence so that he might breathe out the Father's will. We can see that later on in his life, in his earthly ministry, in his his ministry of of healing and teaching. He was continually retreating in prayer, continually coming to spend time with the Father in prayer and meditation. Nothing he did was apart from the Father's will. May that be a lesson for us as well. If we want to act wisely in the world according to God's wisdom, is to spend time with him in prayer and a meditation on his word. Jesus also um, exhibited the tension between obeying earthly rulers, earthly authority, and obeying God. Right here, um, Jesus goes home. He obeys his mother. He is submissive to his father and his mother. He shows us this tension, though, of obeying God and obeying earthly authority. He also, uh, as you see here, Jesus... uh, he had the tension, but he, he fully did it. Um, and that is a lesson for us, too, is to obey our earthly authorities. Uh, it is good, right, and salutary that children should obey parents. Kids, obey your parents. They are wiser than you. God has placed them in authority over you for a reason, for your good. But it is good to obey parents. It's a good to listen to and, and submit to other authorities, bosses, teachers, pastors, civil authorities, This is a good thing, and it comes from God. That is, until these entities tell you to do something that uh, that is against your conscience or against God's word. In that case, we must obey God rather than man, which the apostles definitely had to do. In that book of Acts, we see that recorded. We must obey God rather than earthly authorities, if it comes to that. And you and I, we might have... Uh, we might struggle uh, to know what to say, when to say it, and when to obey, and when not to, when to, to... we, we struggle with the tension, but guess what? Jesus never struggled with it. He always did the right thing. We might fall ill with the foot and mouth disease, but Jesus didn't. We might have issues taming our tongues, but Jesus always knew what to say and when to say it, when to speak up and when to listen. He always did it perfectly. We might struggle with applying our knowledge and intelligence and using wisdom in the world, but Jesus always acted properly just the way his father wanted him to. And how did he do this? Well, because he was in communication with the father. Their father, the the will of the father and his were one. Why did he do this? Why did Jesus come down and embody God's wisdom and, and, and a pure heart? Well, he did it for you. The word became flesh and dwelt among us for us. Jesus came to bring us God's wisdom, God's truth. We don't have to stumble around in the darkness anymore. We don't have to think really hard about it to to know what the truth is, what, what wisdom is. Truth, beauty, justice, and love has come to us in the person and work of Jesus Christ. It's revealed, it's plain for everyone to receive in faith. God's wisdom is for us in Jesus. And that wisdom is perfectly seen in the cross. That is God's wisdom at work in the cross of Christ. St. Paul wrote to the Corinthians, he said, We preach Christ crucified, which is a stumbling block to the Jews and folly to the Gentiles, but to us who are called, who are being saved, who are in Christ, Christ, the wisdom of God. Christ, the power of God. The word became flesh and made its dwelling among us, full of grace and truth, full of wisdom, for you. Now, to end, I have some words of wisdom. 
first, I got words of wisdom for young people, for kids and young people. Uh, I got to warn you, temptations will abound. Temptations are to come. You'll be tempted to find your worth and your meaning and your identity in your social status and who your friends are. You'll be tempted to find your identity in the amount of money you have or the stuff that you have. You'll be tempted by all sorts of passions and desires of the flesh. And guess what? These temptations can be daunting. And you're probably going to wonder, how can I handle this? Well, listen to these words from Psalm 119. How shall a young man or young woman keep their way pure? By guarding it according to your word. Guarding it according to your word. This is my exhortation for young people. Cling to the word of God. Cherish it. Meditate on it. Come and listen to it preached, uh, but to, to just read, mark, and inwardly digest God's word, to cherish it, to love it, to hold and cling tightly to it. And when you do mess up, when you fall prey to temptation, cling to the word of God's grace and his mercy in Christ. Now for all the parents out there and maybe grandparents who are saying, yes, I know this. I know this one. Yep, that's why I'm here. But guess what? My kids and my grandkids, I keep on telling them, but they aren't listening. And they keep on making train wrecks of their lives, making the same mistakes I did. And I'm trying to share my wisdom, but they're not listening. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say anymore. If that's you, here's my counsel. I don't know. I don't know what to do. (laughs) Sorry. I don't know. But God does know. God knows how you are to act and what you are to say to those you love. And so my encouragement for you is to pray. And for all of us to pray Pray for your kids, your grandkids, and those you love and care about, and pray and, and, and pray to God and, and ask him like Solomon did. Grant me a humble listening heart. Grant me a heart that listens to you, because that is the source and the fount of wisdom. And as my experience has told me, um, some of the wisest people I know, are, they don't give advice that much. They don't give counsel all that much. What they do is they listen. They listen carefully, and they ask really good questions and help other people, and help lead them to the truth on their own. And also, if you do that long enough with the people you love, if you just listen to them very carefully, and you ask them really good questions, they're going to come to you for some counsel when the time comes. And so, um, one of the wisest people I know doesn't give a whole lot of advice, but uh, he's my father. My dad is one of the wisest guys I know. And... Um, he doesn't give advice very often, but when he does, it's usually something that sticks with me. And so uh, I have to share this one story. I was golfing with him and my brother and uh, another young pastor uh, a few years ago. And the young pastor there asked my, my dad, he said, uh, hey, Mark, you've been uh, doing ministry now for 35 years, right? And can you share some wisdom with me as a young pastor? And my brother and I were like, ooh, this is going to be good. I can't wait to hear what dad has to say. Get out the pen and paper, right? Well, um, he didn't respond right away. It took like four or five holes for my dad to give an answer. You know, he was thinking about it. You know, thinking about what he was going to say to us. And we got to finally, like, are you going to tell us? Are you going to answer the question? You know, what kind of wisdom do you have for us? And my father uh, said, I just have two words for you. Two words. Be faithful. Be faithful, my dad said. Man, there's a lot of meaning right there. Cling to the faithfulness. Be full of the faith that God has given you in Christ. And respond to him in faith. Be faithful. Cling to God's wisdom in Christ. Stay close to Jesus. Finally, I have a prayer that I want us all to read together. And this prayer is an ancient one. It's been part of the ancient church tradition Uh, for probably 1,200 years now. And it inspired the words of the hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And the church traditionally, leading up to Christmas, the week before, would meditate on one of these verses every night leading up to the the Christmas celebration. It's called the O Antiphons, is the name of it. O Antiphons. And this is the first one. And I want us to all read this together as a conclusion for today. O Wisdom. Proceeding from the mouth of the Most High, pervading and permeating all creation, mightily ordering all things, come and teach us the way of prudence. Amen.
I now invite you all to stand as we confess our faith together. In the words of the Nicene Creed, we confess, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the In our prayers this morning, we pray for Scott Roberts, who is hospitalized, for Phyllis Elston as she is recovering, and for all teachers and students as they begin a new semester. We go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your Son, the eternal Word, become flesh and dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. Extend his praise into all the world, that many more with us would come to hope in his steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy... Heavenly Father, your Son diligently heard the word of God and grew in wisdom and stature, submissive to his earthly parents and always about your business and in your house. Keep the families of your church abiding in your word, eager to be found among your word and sacraments, and always treasuring your divine wisdom and favor. Lord, in your mercy... Heavenly Father, you gave your servant Solomon unsurpassed wisdom to rule your people Israel, chiefly the wisdom that begins in fearing you. Give to the leaders and elected officials of our nation wisdom for their task to discern between good and evil and to govern this people in peace and quietness. Be gracious to preserve our president, our governor, and all legislatures and judges and grant safety to all those deployed in our armed forces. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, give patience and endurance to all who are sick or in need, especially those that we have already named. Heal them according to your will. Also be with the family of Ruth Gerke and those that mourn her death as well, giving them comfort and hope that only can be found in you. Lord, in your mercy, Heavenly Father, your Son has won redemption through your blood, granting the forgiveness and trust of our trespasses. So now, according to the riches of your grace, receive those who come to your blessed sacrament this day. Grant worthy repentance and confident faith to all who commune, united in a sincere confession of the faith. Lord, in your mercy, All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, we gather our tithes and offerings for our Lord. If you haven't done so, uh, or, or... If you haven't done so, please fill out the attendance card that's in the pew rack in front of you and also bring those forward at the time. Please exit your rows to the outside, presenting your offerings in the the attendance cards, returning to your uh, seats down the center aisle. We worship our Lord through our tithes and offerings.
Please stand as we celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. We pray, blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name of the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you all.
Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. We pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled to serve you constantly. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen.